Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I brought in my friend Kurt Anderson, who is an e-commerce evangelist for manufacturers. So how you doing, Kurt? Hey, Chris. I Man, if I was doing any better, I don't know where I'd be. So I, there's nowhere I'd rather be than with you right now. So thank you for this incredible opportunity. I appreciate you, dude. Oh, it's an honor, sir. I mean, I've been following you online. Love what you do, the content you put out, the way you serve others. And I, I want to hear your story. So, so tell us about your journey. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's see. When I was in kindergarten, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm over. So <laughs> I, um, uh, you know, so I, I've shared a little bit with you. So I have, uh, uh, you know, out of college, I took over, uh, you know what? I took over a failed family business. And so uh, my, uh, it was my father's business and uh, he'd run in some uh, personal challenges, what have you. And so fresh out of college, I took over this business and I shared with you previously that I, man, I was just a disaster, just a big, big mess. And uh, stumbled on this thing, e-commerce, had a nice run uh, with e-commerce. I ended up selling that company. And now I've been just passionately trying to help manufacturers uh, with e-commerce. That's on the business side, personal side. Uh, married, I'll be married 25 years. Uh, coming up in May, I have a teenage daughter who is the light of my life. And that's my that's me, man. That's who I am. I love it. I love it. Now, your business name is, is B2B Tail, right? That is correct. B2B Tail. Yep. Awesome. So, well. We're going to unpack that a little bit further. I mean, why don't you go ahead and do that for us now? So B2B Tail, what are you doing there? What, what markets are you serving? How are you helping others? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much, man. So B2B Tail, you know what? I started it during COVID. This is a this is a COVID baby right here. Oh, really? B2B. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I've been doing, I sold the company. I've been doing a bunch of different things. Uh, bought into a little company. I was doing some consulting. I work for what's called the Small Business Development Center, which is a national program that helps small businesses. Uh, I was mm -hmm. with the one, a center here in New York. And so uh, I've been doing that. So then during COVID, it just kind of came about. I wrote, all, uh, I, I, you know what, when COVID hit, I was in the midst of writing a book. So I stopped and I, I, I finished my book. And I'm like, now what am I going to do? And I'm like, I went all in on trying to help manufacturers. Uh, you know, when COVID hit, all the trade shows went away. Sales reps couldn't go on the road manufacturers desperately needed help making this digital transformation. I'm like, well, I did it a while ago. I have a lot of fun doing it. I'm going to put my time, energy, efforts, God-given talents into helping folks uh, figure this thing out. And so that's what I've been doing. I work with different universities. I work with different organizations. And we do a lot of webinars, workshops, training on trying to help manufacturers figure out this whole digital e-commerce uh, transformation, if you will. Absolutely. And since you do work with so many different manufacturers and industries, what are you hearing? What are the greatest challenges around e-commerce specifically that you that you hear, particularly, uh, especially moving into the future? Yeah. You know, one of the first questions, like how, to, where to start, how to start, you know, mm -hmm. I'll do a webinar and uh, kind of, you know, when you go to a webinar, uh, you know, I kind of call it like the DIY, you know, it's like, so somebody comes to the webinar and, you know, Chris, I'm kind of like that crazy uncle gets your kids all sugared up and wound up. And then he, and then he leaves and like sticks you with like your, your sugared up right. kid. You know, you know, right. you know, the type, right. You probably have one in your family or maybe, maybe you're right. that crazy uncle. Right. But, you know, so I'll, I'll have folks come to a webinar. I get them all worked up, wound up. I try to inspire them. But the thing is, they're like, yeah, great. That was fantastic. Uncle Kurt, I'm all sugared up, but I still, I heard you, but I have no idea where to start. So then we mm. offer a lot of like different training and we call it like do it with you because we want to do it with our manufacturers. We call it, we want to teach you how to fish. Uh, you know, right. maybe you've encountered this. I've had so many manufacturers that have been burnt by, you know, and, and no disrespect to any firms that they've worked with, but maybe just, you know, there was just a disconnect. You know, they were speaking different languages, uh, burnt by an SEO firm or maybe an e-commerce firm and it just didn't go well. And so what our goal is like, how can we do it with you? to help kind of teach you, educate you. Not that the manufacturer is going to be an SEO expert or an e-commerce expert, but we want to educate them enough to be dangerous that they at least now, they're now a competent consumer. Your educated right. consumer is always your best consumer. That's what we try to do with our manufacturers. I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, you're doing a great job with that, Kurt. And I'm, I'm curious, so when people think of e-commerce, there sometimes there's something that comes to mind. Maybe there's some common myths out there around e-commerce or particular why it's so hard to do from a from a manufacturer yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Any myths that you'd like to debunk it here on the show today? Man, I'll tell you, you know, when you're a solopreneur starting out of your living room, you know, and budget's a little bit tight, you know, uh, you can still you, like virtually e-commerce is for any budget. You know, like you guys are are doing a whole e-commerce initiative, you know, a bigger company, maybe you have a stronger bandwidth versus somebody out of their living room. 
but even somebody in their living room that, you know, e-commerce, in my humble opinion, there's no greater means that's more efficient, more effective, easier to kind of kick the tires, test a, a product, test a market, let alone, you know, a company that has some bandwidth and some budget, you know, a company that has like 20, 30, 40, 50 employees, and you want to get into this right. digital transformation. I tell you, e-commerce is extremely affordable, effective, and a great way to kick the tires on how can we take the business into a new direction. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, let's say we're, we have some some young people entering the workforce. You want to try to give them some advice, particularly around pursuing an e-commerce path. Maybe try things, headwinds they need to be aware of, or things like that. Where are you trying? Where are you going to be telling them to to get them ready? Oh, phenomenal question. Phenomenal question, man. I would so you know. My first thought is, man, go all in. Okay, I have a friend who uh, has a, a son, you know, fresh out of uh, you know, he's college. And, you know, he reached out to me recently and he was like, hey, I know you're, you know, business guy and I, I'm, you know, and he wants to become an entrepreneur. And I'll tell you, you know, I'm like, man, go all in, just go all in. But here's, here's the advice I give, whether they're a 60 something entrepreneur or this 19 year old, uh -huh. niche down, niche down, niche down. And I'll tell you, I have a tagline, you know, if anybody that kind of, if, I'm, if anybody with, is within shouting distance of me. You're, they're familiar with this term that I use. I call it niche down till it hurts. Niche down till it hurts because like every time you get out of your, you know, when you try to be jack of all trades, master of none, you try to be everything to everybody, you become nothing to no one. What I encourage folks is like, man, pick a platform, pick a lane. So what specifically as you're saying LinkedIn or as you're saying e-commerce, you know, maybe become a, a Google shopping expert. Maybe the a uh, maybe an e-commerce shopping cart, uh, particular shopping cart expert. You know, pick get into right. a loan and like just give it all you've got. Right. Versus, I, I love he said, just don't. If you try to be a jack of all trades, you you really master nothing at that point, right? right. I mean, you just right. that niche there. I love that strategy. So important. But I mean, I, I think it's it's sometimes it can be scary too because we don't want to just niche down. We want to be everything to everybody, right? It, you know, a hundred percent. And I just like, you know, uh, even for myself, you know, like there's, uh, I was just with somebody last night, we we're doing like a little consulting thing. And I'm like, man, like, I just, I finally, you know what, Chris, I'm 53. I finally figured out what I'm good at. You know what I'm good at? I'm good at admitting what I'm not good at and whatever I'm not good at. I'm trying to like, just stay out of that lane. Like if, uh -huh. you know, to create a financial relationship with somebody on something like, I just don't know, I don't fully understand it's really, it's just even just, you know, I don't, I don't mean to be so harsh to say disrespectful, but I'm doing a disservice to that person. I'm wasting my time and energy. And so it's, it's, it's very difficult to, you know, and I'm constantly like everybody I work with, like, we're like, let's be accountability partners. on like, how can we stay in our lane? And when I'm not in my, you know what, when I'm in, when I'm outside my lane, you know, what makes me look better to my client is when I mm -hmm. bring in that other, I bring in a Joe Sullivan, mm -hmm. I bring in Jeff right. Long. And say like, hey, you want video value bombs? You need to talk to our buddy Jeff Long because he is the video guy. Why would I waste my time stumbling trying to figure this out when I've got a Jeff Long in my back pocket or I got a Joe, Joe Sullivan in my back pocket? So again, it's hard to get there. Maybe the 19-year-old might not see that. But as you are more seasoned entrepreneur, and I don't care where you're at with your walk of life, boy, exploit what you're best at and, and surround yourself with just awesome people, right? You know, I, as a matter of fact, I listen to your podcast. And I think it was either you or Jeff Long talked about the rising tides lifts all ships. And that's right. exactly, you guys were talking about masterminds, as a matter of fact. And that's, you know, that's what I'm talking about here is like, how do you have that rising tide? I love it, man. I mean, and to your point for that 19 year old, sounds like you, you lean into pretty heavily around mentorship and trying to help others grow. Any examples of, of, of mentorship for you particularly? Like, do you oh, have a wow. mentor that you work with? Yeah, but dude, that's a phenomenal question. You know, like you mentioned podcasts, like, you know, what an inspiration, like, you know, here Gary V was a, was a, you know, a, a virtual mentor to you that inspired you to get this going. You know, uh, right. I'm a big listener of uh, Ed Milet. Ed Milet's a great relationship. Oh, yeah. Mentor. He's a, a man deep in faith. And so, like, I listen to Ed. I kind of view him a mentor. My podcast par partner, Damon Pasoka, is a, a mentor. But, you know, when you look over your career, you know, when you've been going at it a decade, two decades, three decades, you look over your career, you know, there's seasons that come in your life. And there's a saying, mm -hmm. you know, when a student is ready, the teacher appears. And I think when you, if you reflect back on your life and you like, you'll see when teachers appear in your life where you just weren't ready for a transformation or something to hit you. But man, out of the blue, when you put something out to the universe of like, 
hey, you know what? Maybe I'll do this podcast. So then you, Adam, you get your team, you, you like you bring your resources together. And now, multi, you know, multi, multi hundred episodes later, now you're rocking it. But but on your first one, you're like, hey, how are we going to do this together as a team? Right. Right. So I think uh, so my that was a long winded answer. But boy, just, you know, put it out there of what your your goal, your dream, your aspiration. What were you put on this earth to do? And man, get people on your bus to help. And again, the more that you you've dude, you do a great job talking about serve, serve, serve. That's like whenever I heard that word, I'm going to be thinking of great Chris Granger. And you're just synonymous with the word serve. But boy, what great advice from Chris, guys. When you're out there, you dedicate yourself to serving. Great things are going to happen to you. Thank you, brother, so much for that. I mean, and I, I, my takeaway from what you just said there so many times, just start. Just start. And we get, we get, we get like cripple ourselves in perfectionism. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, our first podcast for Eco Ask Why, we didn't hit the record button. So Adam likes to throw me underneath the bus all the time. It happens. It's okay. I love him like a brother. But on the first one, he didn't hit record. So, <laughs> you know, I had that to come back on. And we, and that's a, that's a running joke between he and I. But you know what? We just started. You know, and we and we and we got it going. We had a plan, obviously, a, a little of a, a little bit of a strategy, but it's evolved. But just don't cripple yourself with perfectionism. Just get just put something out there, and then just keep going. Get on the field, man. You know, anybody that's a sports fan, just like just you know, you can practice, 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 practice. Get on the field. Just get on the field and play the game. Throw a block, make a tackle. Just get on the field, right? That's it. That's right. Got to get out to the stands. Well, I'm curious. The last question around work, and then we're going to talk uh, outside of work, have some fun. So when you're doing what you do at B2B Tail and you're serving others and you're out there, you're, you're, you're having a great day. What did you do that day? What's, what brings you that mo- that joy and that fulfillment? You know, man, another great question. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm giving another shout out to our buddy, Jeff Long. I know like when you asked him this question, he was like, you know what? I feel like I've never worked a day in, in my life. You know, like, I'm not maybe right. quite, you know, I, I, I have days where I feel like I work, but like, uh, I love what I do, you know, and, and somebody shared with me, you were talking about like a mentor, somebody shared with me, like, you know, when you're in a moment and like you get chills and they're like, when mm-hmm. you get chills, like, you know, like you're in your sweet spot, you know, and right. I strive to like get those chills. So again, like, you know, I've mentioned it multiple times now, you know, I do webinars, workshops, so like when we're doing a workshop and, you know, we see, you know, the, a client has a light bulb go off. Or like they they feel the difference, you know. That's you know like in it in it. It I just feel blessed, Chris. I just feel blessed. I love what I do, and I'm very passionate about it. And I'm just surrounded by amazing people like yourself and the mutual friends that we have. And so, bottom line, every day's uh, every day is just a God given great day. How's that, man? This is this see this is why I wanted to have a, this conversation, <laughs> Kurt, because you just bring that level of energy, brother. So thank you so much for that. So. We'll, we'll get off the professional path because I love for these hero conversations to let people know you outside of work. So what do you do for fun? Got any hobbies or anything like that you, you'd like to share? Yeah. You know what? So, you know, my younger days, tons of hobbies. Now, like it's faith, family, fun, you know, so I'm very family focused. Mm-hmm. And so those are my priorities. Work, you know, uh, unfortunately, like we were just saying, work is a lot of fun. And uh, so, you know, it's really my daughter's a figure skater. So I basically my second home is a skating rink. And uh, okay. you know, when you're when you're a skating dad, it's like, you know, it's multiple days. And so I, I love every minute of it. I'm dreading when she's going to when she graduates and, and I'm not at the rink anymore. I'm not sure what I'll do. I might be calling you for advice. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's, you know, family and faith and fun. Those are my those are my hobbies. Love it. Absolutely. And you've mentioned family several times. So you have a daughter. How long was it you said you've been married? Uh, it'll be 25 years next year. So yeah, 1998. Yeah. Yeah. Time flies. Wow. I don't know, dude, that was like, you talked about a sales per- I'm not, I have never deemed myself a good salesperson, but somehow I pulled that one off. That was my biggest, <laughs> that was my best sale of my career. How's that one? I'm not sure. I'm still not sure how I did pull that off. <laughs> I am with you all the way there, buddy. I definitely married up and, uh, you know, she didn't see it coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll kick the coverage is you right. Is that the famous line? So I use that. That's one. right. That's right. I, I'll kick the coverage for sure. man. So now, now you mentioned, so, uh, where is home for you? New York? Is that yeah, where so you I'm, said I'm, you were from? I'm in Lakewood, New York. I live in a beautiful little lake. It's called Chautauqua Lake. It's like a little touristy area. Uh, Russ, you know, it's a lot of factories. So along the great lakes, uh, from like, you know, from Illinois all the way through New York, they call it the Rust Belt. I'm in the Rust Belt. So there's a lot of heavy duty manufacturing where I'm at. And uh, so just, I absolutely love where we live and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fall day. And so that's where, that's my world. 
Okay. Now, do you have other family in the area, or are you guys spread all out, or is no, it all kind of local? Yeah, we we ha- we have a little bit of family, but it's pretty, you know, like Jersey, Connecticut, California. My wife's mother's in Seattle, and so you know, we've we've got people okay. kind of all over the place, you know. So, uh, you know, it's it's it, it makes it challenging, you know. But we love going to, you know, we love heading out to Seattle or my my mother law she winters in in uh, Phoenix and then summers in Seattle. So we get hey, let's go to Phoenix or let's go to Seattle. So you know, it makes it nice, right? That's awesome. That's all. Well, thank you for sharing about your family. I personally, that's my favorite part of all the shows is just hearing about the people and their families and all the cool things. Cause I mean, we get so wrapped up in our careers and at the end of the day, man, it's not what's under the Christmas tree is who's around it. So uh, I just, I just enjoy that. So thank you for sharing that. How about things you just enjoy consuming for fun? I mean, you, you you already have a, a killer LinkedIn live show, but what other podcasts, YouTube channels, books, maybe that you enjoy reading? It, it, yeah. it could be per- personal or professional, what, whatever. I, just, I love sharing resources with our listeners. Yeah, great. Um, you know, I'm an avid reader. Uh, I'm an avid, you know, podcast guy. So, you know, you and I, we just mentioned Ed Milet. That's a big one. Um, yeah. There's a great book I've got right here. It's called, uh, there's a guy named Guy Raz. He has, a, he, uh, he has a book called How I Built This. And then he has a podcast okay. with the same name. That's a pretty good one. Um, okay. You know, I'm, I'm, John Maxwell, I'm a big John Maxwell reader yeah. you know, in his podcast. Um, just, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just constantly reading, man. Just, you know, yeah. act, you know, eager learner, like how to get better, do better. And so, you know, Kindle is my best friend on my, on my phone, you know, and so I'm constantly reading. That's it. I'm, me too, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a big time reader. I got the Maxwell leadership Bible right here by my yeah, side. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. it's really cool, man. It's got a lot of his insights in it and, and from a leadership standpoint, you know, in the scriptures. So good stuff, man. Well, thank you for sharing that, uh, yeah. those resources. We'll make sure we'll put that one book. Uh, we'll link that up in the show notes for our listeners. If you want to get a copy, we'll grab it there. We'll also make sure you have a copy of Kurt's book. I'm holding that up for our YouTube followers right now. Stop being the best kept secret manufacturing e-commerce strategy. So we'll make sure that link is in there as well, because I forgot I'm, I'm, I'm talking with an author. Man, this is a big deal. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I don't That's it, buddy. Yeah, I don't even have a comeback for that one. So, well, and what's funny is, so, and I, I think sometimes you ask folks like, "What's on their nightstand?" I actually, and, and it just hit me right now as you said it that you've got John Maxwell's book right there. I have a John Maxwell book that it was given to me by Nicole Donnelly. She's my partner in crime. Great industrial B two B marketer. She'd be an amazing guest for you on this program. She bought yeah. me that book and it sits right on my nightstand. And I, I love peeking in and just John Maxwell is just such an inspiration. No doubt. Absolutely. Well, Kurt, we, we're getting close to the end. Before we, we wrap up, we like to do a lightning round. It's sure. just fun stuff yep. back and forth just to let our listeners know a little bit more about you. So if you're willing to play, man, we'll jump right in. Lay it on me, brother. All right. All right. What's your favorite food? My favorite food, you know what? I'm a smoothie junkie. So I'm going to go, I like, I just, I'm a huge smoothie guy. So I'm just, I'm going to, whether we consider that tough fruit, right? So that, that throw, that goes in the, the food label. How's that? Okay. All right. And that's the first smoothie that, that somebody, I, when I've asked that, that that's come up. So, okay. It, that's interesting. Of like, course, it's, I like did I, it's like, I'm addicted to them. Like, it's like, it's almost <laughs> like a little, it's like a problem, but anyway, I love smoothies. I'm a smoothie. So Chris, if you and I ever get together, dude, I'm buying you a smoothie. How's that? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink, you know, I'm, should I repeat the same answer? You know, so I, you know, what? I'm an orange juice junkie. So I, uh, orange I, juice. Yeah, okay. So I'm, that, that's about as hard as I go as far as, you know, if you're out with me on a yep. Friday night, I'm sipping orange juice or water, but, uh, you know, I'm an orange juice guy. That's it. That's it. Now we already know that you have that one book on your nightstand. What yeah. else is on your nightstand? You know, great question. Probably, you know, uh, probably a lamp and uh, that John Maxwell book and probably my phone, uh, my uh, plug in my phone. Right. I think that's the yep. only things that are on my nightstand. That's it. Well, now, what's the favorite app on your phone? Favorite app on my phone? You know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, Kind like we just mentioned, Kindle. I'm a Pandora mm-hmm. I'm a music junkie, constantly, constantly listening to music. So I'd say Kindle and, and Pandora. And of course, you and I are both big LinkedIn guys. I'm popping in LinkedIn on my phone. So. I gave you, yeah. I gave you three. How's that? So that's it. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll accept that. You can go three. Right. Now, every good pastor has three points, right? So there that's you go. Right. You're that's an evangelist. Right. So that's, that's right. it. That's <laughs> right. I love it. So what's your, now you mentioned your big music guy. So what, what music are you listening to? You know, I try to do a mix. So I, you know, I've, uh, uh, 
I, I do some, I do Christian music. I used to never listen to Christian music. And now like, you know, I'm a big Christian music guy. I like, I enjoyed grunge from the nineties. I, you know, like I try to get, I like R and B. So I, I like to mix it up. So I, I like to keep a variety going. I had, I had Lady Gaga going on the, on the Pandora the other day. How's that one? A little Lady Gaga. I think Katy Perry was in that mix. So I try to keep a nice variety rolling. So uh, that's, that's what I'm listening to. Okay. Well, what's your, what's your favorite Christian artist? You know, um, Mike, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I listen to Toby Mac. I listen to, uh, what was it King and Country? Um, yeah. Like uh, Hillcrest or uh, Hill, um, Hill Song, I, uh, you know, right. Bethel, you know, like, so uh, a lot of that stuff. Um, so I like, I like a little bit of, of a lot, I think. Okay. Yeah. I saw Toby Mac uh, once or twice. He's, he's awesome in, in, in concert. He's just in a concert. I've never seen him in concert. So yeah, and this is yeah. like, this is pretty, uh, pretty new to me on the, you know, like in the past few years, I've really kind of gotten into it. And so, yeah, I really enjoy, uh, um, who's Pat Barrett. I'm a big Pat Barrett fan. Too. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do a couple more. What's your favorite sports team? Well, you know, I'm an Ohio state graduate, so I'm going to go with okay. Ohio state Buckeyes. How's that? I got to go with my, my alma mater. There you go. There you go. What's your all time favorite movie? Oh, saving private Ryan, Tom Hanks, man. Ooh. That's my that's my favorite of all time. Save it, Private Ryan. Nice. Nice. Love it. And last question for you, Kurt. Dogs or cats? Oh, dude, I have a 135-pound Rottweiler, man. That's I'm 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 all about the dogs. Nothing personal about the cat people, but I'm all about the dogs. Hey, bro. It, and there's only one right answer to that question. <laughs> you got it. So I'm so thankful you did because now we can yeah. remain friends. So that's, that's awesome. Right. I'm I'm yeah, no disrespect to my cat friends, but I'm 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 yeah, I'm a I'm a raving over the top dog lover. So, well, Kurt, this has been awesome. We always wrap up Eco S Y with the why. So, if somebody comes up to you and wants to know what your personal why is, what are you going to tell them? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's my family. It's you know, my wife and daughter are you know totally my why. You know, I, whether that's cliche or not, but that's you know, my daughter's the light of my life, and so I just really try to you know every day I'm striving, try to be the best dad that I can. You know, when you and I connected, I just love right in your headline, how you, you know, you put it right out there. I had come yep. across your, your profile, you know, quite a while before we actually connected. And I was just like, man, I've got to meet this guy. And so again, it's just such an honor and privilege being here today and being with like-minded folks that are just passionate. You know, we're just trying to better ourselves every day and we're on that quest. And so, man, dude, I cannot express my thanks for today. Thank you for this opportunity. Appreciate you. And thank you. Thank you, brother. Now, where, where do you want to, people to go to connect with you we'll give we'll give a call out we'll make sure everything's synced up in the show notes but where should they go if they're just listening sure absolutely love to connect with anybody on linkedin that's where i live that's where i hang out that's where you and i hang out so uh love yep. you know drop me a connection i'd be honored to hear what you have going on and and you know anyway like we keep talking about today chris how can we serve and uh stop by b2b tell it's my website and uh just you know love to help anybody out there that wants to figure these things out together well, Kurt, it's been an honor, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your your hero story. You definitely are a hero, brother. I hope you have a wonderful day. Hey, right back at you, brother. Thank you, man. What a fun hero conversation with Kurt Anderson. I'll tell you what, that guy, full of energy, full just just he's someone you just want to be around. You feel better just being in his presence. So I hope everyone enjoyed that. Remember what he said, niche down. You can't be everything to everyone. But niche down, find out what you're good at and, and then lean into that 100%. Highly encourage you to ch go check out, Kurt, what he's doing at B2B Tail, all the wonderful content he's putting out online, uh, particularly LinkedIn. That's, that's where he lives. He has a wonderful show he puts out, I believe it's every Friday, which is a weekly show, the LinkedIn Live, where he, he dives deep into topics with different guests that really, it's just all about serving others and helping them grow. So again, if you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone. Hit, go to your butt, your phone right now. Hit hit the button. Send it out. It's really important. Then while you're there, give us a rating, five stars. Give us write a review. That would make all the difference as well. Again, Eco asks why we're here to serve, particularly in the areas of people and ideas over products. So we hope you enjoyed this conversation. We hope you enjoyed this story. And remember, keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco asks why. This show is supported ad-free by an electrical equipment company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. 
Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.